Scams and ripoffs happen every day, but there's also corruption and manipulation, and sometimes it's blatant, but it could also be subtle. I'm Paulina Bootskin. Welcome to our weekly 13 Investigates special. 13 Investigates is committed to looking out for you and your money, making sure that you're not getting a, real, a raw deal. This is the best of 13 Investigates from this week. Homeowners are in a years long battle after calling a plumber to fix a simple leak. Well, it became the subject of a 13 investigation after Darcy Spears uncovered dirty dealing by a contractor. The contractor put liens on his customers' homes after abandoning the projects. But now another company who saw our coverage is stepping up to help a homeowner who lost hope that she'd ever be able to live in her house again. Darcy Spears has the story. Joanne, you're essentially a visitor in your own home at this point. Yes. Why? Uh, it's it's unlivable. You can't live in it. There's no way. There's no plumbing. There are, there's no toilets. There's no water. There's nothing. That was last September when we first reported on 71-year-old Joanna Goodall's case. In January 2019, she called Ruderman Plumbing for a leaky shower, a fix originally estimated to cost 250 bucks, but that ballooned to over $4,000 when a technician told Joanna there was a disconnected sewer pipe. About four hours later, he came in and he told me I had to vacate the house that in the process, they found a 10-foot sinkhole underneath the front of my house. New cost, $28,000. Another company, Bulmer Restoration, showed up to start the work. They told Joanna they found asbestos, so they had to tear out drywall, work she says she did not authorize that effectively demoed nearly every room in the house. Both Ruderman and Bulmer Restoration are owned by the same man, Eduardo Arredondo. The Nevada State Contractors Board charged Arredondo with more than 100 violations, including fraudulent or deceitful acts, failure to comply with contract, bidding beyond scope of license, and abandonment. The state found his companies guilty, revoked their licenses last October, and fined them nearly a million dollars, a portion of justice. Well, it's... Uh, it's been three and a half years. But not much help for Joanna. She was forced to move out of state, living with relatives while still making mortgage payments on her unlivable home. I mean, it still hurts if I stop to think about it, but I've managed to get through it. But basically, when it first started, for the first year and a half, I, I was devastated. I didn't know which way to turn. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how this could happen to anyone. That's something we might have to cut. Plumber Michael Beebe couldn't understand it either. Within hours of seeing our original report, I thought of my mom. You know, he emailed saying he wanted to help. Let me set tape. As contractors, we're constantly having to fight off battles like these. These uh, contractors that come in, you, you hear the nightmare stories, and, and unfortunately, we have to fight off that reputation. And there are a lot of good companies out here in Vegas, but it just you know, messes it up for everybody. His company, 702 Plum Air, is fixing Joanna's plumbing and installing faucets and vanities for free. Well, first and foremost is getting her working toilets, and that's kind of what we're working on right now. She doesn't have a working toilet in either one of these bathrooms here. He's my hero. <laughs> he is totally my hero right now. Remember that supposed sinkhole Bulmer Restoration says they found under Joanna's house? Never once. I've never seen it sinkhole period here in Vegas. And we've cut open a whole bunch of slabs before. Joanna says the experience left her with a sinking feeling. The, the whole system failed me. Nevada failed me. Nevada failed me. I, I would swear at that time I would never buy in Nevada again. Or I wanted to be rid of Nevada, but I couldn't because I was stuck here making payments on a house I couldn't live in. Now, thanks to contractors like Michael Beebe, Joanna can finally move forward. I think I would have been overlooked entirely if it wasn't for Channel 13. Eduardo Arredondo did not respond to our call for comment for this story. He filed for bankruptcy last spring. The contractors board has a total of 15 filed claims for recovery funds related to Bulmer and Ruderman. They've heard four cases so far and each of those homeowners got at least some of their money back. Joanna wasn't one of them. Darcy Spears, 13 Investigates.
We'll be right back with more of 13 Investigates after the break. Pro Welcome back to our 13 Investigate special. For more details on the stories you are watching today, visit our website, ktnv.com slash 13 Investigates. And if you have a story idea or a tip, email us at 13 Investigates at ktnv.com. From flowers to brunch to jewelry, inflation right now is raising prices on all things Mother's Day. So how do you make mom feel special without overspending? Right? So guess who we're going to talk to? Consumer <laughs> reporter John Metteris, who found some ways to save so you don't waste your money. Floral centers everywhere are busy this week. Shoppers like Tasha Thompson search for that perfect flower or plant for mom. And whatever she wants, it's just whatever mom wants, mom gets. But inflation is hitting even Mother's Day this year, with families expected to spend a record $245 each. So how can you keep those costs down? Store manager John Clark. You have your rose. You know, that could be planted outside. Suggests buying mom a long lasting flowering plant that she can put in her garden, like roses, lilies, or hydrangeas. Instead of something that might last two weeks, it's, it's an ever giving gift. You know, all through, throughout the season, uh, whenever she looks out, she, it'll be reminded of, of who gave her that gift. Now, even with inflation this year, people still want to treat their moms. While flowers may top the list, jewelry isn't far behind. Jewelry is typically on sale around this time of year anyway. Shopping expert Trey Bodge says buying jewelry for mom doesn't have to be expensive. Costume jewelry is a lot more affordable. And considering a lot of women have been working from home, now's a great time to buy mom some fresh workday accessories. She might like some fun sort of sparkly pieces to, to dress up with um, as she's going back to work. When shopping for gifts, Bodge says stick to your budget. Look for sales, especially on Mother's Day themed items. Or skip the spending and offer to help mom with a chore or project. Overall, though, the National Retail Federation expects people to spend extra on mom this year. They're not going to skimp on mom because of inflation. They really want this to feel like a special year. And that way you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. After the pandemic, it's just so much harder to find camps that are available or open or have the before and after care. Jenny Mealy is a proud mother of three very active children. She and her husband also work full time jobs. Every kid needs to have a camp or some kind of activity that they could do basically every week so that they're not sitting at home watching TV or <laughs> fending for themselves. Jenny and her husband have spent a lot of time researching online and checking references to find a summer camp that not only is a good fit, but also fits their budget. Uh, on average, you're talking up to 500, 600 bucks a week sometimes. And then when you have three kids, that gets really expensive. Sarah Wetzel is with the Better Business Bureau. She tells us they've had plenty of complaints when it comes to summer camps. The biggest complaints is really about their refund policy, them not being clear or the consumer not understanding, and their child only goes to camp for maybe a day. Maybe the camp wasn't a good fit for the child or the child becomes ill, and they don't stay the duration of the camp. When it comes to filling your summer with camps, the BBB offers this advice. If possible, visit the camp before submitting your deposit and check out all the emergency and safety features. Then ask about fees and payment deadlines and is that deposit refundable are meals and transportation offered and what about aftercare and what is the return rate of both campers and staff another great thing is the american camp association it's a great resource all those accredited camps meet 300 nationally recognized standards it is so stressful for us parents <laughs> so i just i some are supposed to be fun and it's, it's sometimes hard to think about sometimes but it doesn't have to be hard if you follow these tips so you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. Get the best of 13 investigates on your time. Download the KTNV 13 Action News app on your Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire TV streaming device. Visit ktnv.com slash apps for more information. We will be right back with more after the break. Welcome back to our 13 Investigate special. For more details on the stories you are watching today, visit our website, ktnv.com slash 13 Investigates. And if you have a story idea or a tip, email us at 13 Investigates at ktnv.com. Well, the check is in the mail, and unfortunately, thieves are well aware. So we want to tell you how you can protect yourself so you don't become a victim to a scam. Scams are everywhere. We just don't get a break. That's right. Consumer reporter John Mattery shows us how to avoid getting your check stolen so you don't waste your money.
Joe Duffy thought there was some mistake. I mean, this is his life savings. But it was real. Someone stole more than $90,000 from his elderly dad's checking account, almost his whole retirement. I don't know what percentage of the population uh, isn't going to get some form of angina or have a heart attack over the fact that $93,000 was removed from their account. He says a thief stole this utility payment check, then changed the recipient's name and the amount. Originally, it was made out to, I believe, $147 pay one of his bills, they washed all that out. Instead, they wrote in $32,000 and cashed it. Then using his dad's account number, they printed more checks for thousands more. It's a, a very big problem at this point. David Maiman is a cybersecurity expert at Georgia State University. He says thieves use chemicals to remove handwritten ink off checks, then sell them through underground online networks. They don't want to raise red flags. And so, you know, they offer to other people, other criminals across the country to do the, the the job for that. So how can you protect yourself when mailing a check? Well, the first thing seems pretty obvious. Never leave a check in your unlocked personal mailbox. It's not 1958 anymore. And even at an official blue mailbox, check the collection times first. You want to make sure the mail will be picked up in the next couple of hours. Security experts also suggest you use a gel pen, not ballpoint pen, on checks. Write in black ink, not blue, which is harder to wash, and pay bills electronically when possible. The USPS tells us the Postal Inspection Service will aggressively pursue perpetrators that use the U.S. mail system to further their illegal activity. But that doesn't help Joe Duffy still fighting to get his dad's money back. As always, don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. Carolyn Nirenberg is at wit's end when it comes to getting a new working refrigerator. They said, well, you can have the floor model or we can order you another and, and it'll probably be about a year before you get it. A year? A year. <laughs> so she reluctantly took the floor model and said the ice maker never worked since day one. We went to use the ice and the water mechanism and it doesn't work. It leaks all over the inside of the refrigerator. But even though it was under warranty, the repair company has tried four times to fix it, waiting weeks for some parts, and it still leaks. It all comes down through here. But it's not just kitchen appliances right now where things are out of stock or parts are hard to find or there's long delays. It seems no matter what type of home project you're doing right now, expect it to take a lot longer till you finally have it finished. I mean, we're seeing an increase in appliance cost as well as extended lead times. Home builder Ben Fry says fridges and dishwashers are not the worst. It can take up to a year to get windows and garage doors. So his advice to customers, try to order a standard size window or door. Ask about appliances that are in stock, not special order. And order months before you need something. Right when the customer signs a contract, we're ordering windows, garage doors, appliances. I mean, um, you know, bathroom fixtures, just everything we can that has extended lead times to make sure it comes in on time. Carolyn hopes to finally have a working fridge by summer. It is very frustrating. <laughs> you know, you get your heart set on remodeling, you get in the groove, and it's, like I said, it's just been kind of a nightmare after nightmare. And that way you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. We'll be right back with more of 13 Investigates after the break. Pre Welcome back to our 13 Investigate special. For more details on the stories you are watching today, visit our website, ktnv.com slash 13 Investigates. And if you have a story idea or a tip, email us at 13 Investigates at ktnv.com. 34 years ago today, there was a huge explosion mm. here in the valley. Anyone who lived here could tell you about PEPCON. Yeah, in fact, a woman on the nursing staff at St. Rose Dominican Hospital that day was a caregiver and a victim. And to this day, her memory is as clear as the day it happened. Wow. And all of a sudden, PEPCON goes off. And you felt the movement. You felt the earth move and the building move. May 4th, 1988. Explosions at the PEPCON plant violently rocked Henderson. The shock waves rolled across the valley. St. Rose Hospital was so close to the blast that it blew out the windows. Sandra Layton witnessed it while on duty. And as I'm walking down the hallway at this point in time, as the building is, is shaking and rumbling, I saw the windows come in. They exploded inward and people were literally covered in glass. And I, I could think, it's, so people are running around screaming and hollering, we're being bombed. I said, no, it, 
feels more like an earthquake, but this is not just an earthquake. Pepcon was one of only two factories in the nation that made ammonium perchlorate, in layman's terms, rocket fuel. When it blew, more than 370 people were injured, and the closest hospital was St. Rose Dominican. I mean, it was no more than maybe 20 minutes, and people were running into the ER. We had all kinds of, you know, it was cuts, lots and lots of cuts, and uh, uh, abrasions and such. Amazingly, only two perished in the explosion, but the event paralyzed the city. Virtually all schools in the district went on lockdown. Traffic was at a standstill. Oh, it just blew again. And many were dazed by the shock wave. We had to remember that we had to, to regroup and clean up as much as we could and get the patients settled back into their beds because a lot of them had pulled their mattresses off the bed and hidden under the mattresses. All that day, first responders worked endlessly. The city was on edge for weeks not knowing, and damage estimates kept coming in. And I think I got home by 8.30 that night and looking at the own, my own damage in my own home uh, was like, oh my, I couldn't believe it because I had uh, a lot of extensive, uh, uh, what they call concussion damage. Through it all, Sandra never forgot her duty. That was an interesting day and it took us quite some time. And then uh, we had to remember that we had patients there that were already there besides those that were coming in. Now, to this day, the exact cause of the explosion is still murky. Now, Pepcon relocated to Utah. The Kid Marshmallow plant right next door was flattened and never rebuilt. We do want to mention Sandra Layton's interview was provided to us by Dignity Health. Thanks for watching our 13 Investigate special. If you missed any part of this week's program, just hit the back button on your remote and scroll down until you see 13 Investigates or visit our website at ktnv.com 13 Investigates to find more stories like these on our website. Stay tuned for more from 13 Action News after the break and check us out anytime right here at KTNV streaming Las Vegas News on your time.